Hola, how are we doing? Who else has got their Christmas tree up? I couldn't wait. <laughs> Comment below if you're a bit of a Christmas geek like me and couldn't wait to put your, your tree up this year. I, do you know what? We need a bit of Christmas cheer, don't we, this year? It's, um, it's uplifting. We ate mince pies, we watched Christmas movies, we played Christmas songs. Hey Kerry, how are you doing? We had a really nice weekend actually doing it. It was really nice to get into the Christmas cheer. God, this is bright, isn't it? My face looks really like white and, and lit up. Let me see if I can change, change the light in one second. I think it's a bit much, isn't it? Is that better? Still quite, quite harsh, isn't it? Oh, worse. What do we reckon, guys? Which one? That one, that one, that one. We're gonna go with that one. Hey Jessie, how are you doing? Hi again. Yeah, just come off client calls this evening. So we've been having our, our WAM calls. Amazing, amazing calls. We've got one group of girls graduating. Um, a big group graduating and all sort of sharing their wins. And, and that was quite, um, it, was, it was amazing, but it's always quite sad to see people go. Happy, because they're ready to leave, but also sad to watch them go. Um, and we were just celebrating things like, you know, one of the girls just jumped on. I was like, I'm just about to have my first 10K month. And she was sharing how at points over the last month or so, she felt like she was holding on to a pack of dogs. That's how she described it. Like everything was just going and her business is just going. And she just thought, I've got to stay in the game and hold on tight. And just about to hit her first 10K month. And it's only the 16th of the month. Um, and I just loved that analogy that she shared about holding on tight. So if any of you are feeling like you're holding on to a pack of dogs and feel like sometimes you just need to let go because it's get, getting too intense, never let go. Keep holding on. It'll be worth it. And let's dive into today's session. I'm, 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 how do I feel about today? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've, I've done very little preparation for this other than reading through my journals because I just want to speak from here. I firstly want to apologise for not being here for you last last Monday as promised. Um, this is obviously episode five, even though we've been running it for six weeks, because episode five was meant to be last week. This is meant to be episode six. Those of you that will see have seen my recent live video about uh, James and our, our, our kind of journey in IVF will know that I was um, attending a hospital appointment on, on Monday. I'm okay. It's... Um, not bad news, we're very, very blessed we've got news. I'm not gonna go into it now. Have a look at that video if you if you wanna know more about that. Um, hey Jackie, how are you doing? Who else is there? Say hello when you're getting logged in so I know who's listening. Um, so I just wanna say thank you so much for you guys that have reached out, whether it be a comment or a message with words of support and encouragement for the journey that we're about to embark on, James and I becoming parents and I'm not pregnant yet, watch the video. If you haven't watched it already, or else nothing else, nothing I'm saying is gonna make sense. But I just wanted to say thank you because honestly, we've been inundated with so much love and support and it's it really does make a difference. It really, really does. It's so encouraging, so uplifting. And thank you for not reaching out with opinions or stories or, because that's not always helpful. And you know, we've not had one person say something negative or share a story that puts a bit of Debbie Downer on things. Nobody's done anything like that. And I'm just, I think it's just testament to what awesome people we have here. Um, first ever time watching. Oh, hello. Well, really nice to have you here. Um, if anybody else is a first timer, let me know so I can say hi and welcome, welcome you. So episode five of five years ago, I was living in a caravan, so I'm a millionaire and the steps that I took to get here. Today, this week and next week are both quite difficult shares and I'm going to ask you to bear with me at points. I don't know how it's going to be sharing these things with you. I've never shared any of these things publicly before. Hey Kerry, first time watching live as well. So anybody else that's first time, please, please let us know. And, and also let me know have you followed, if you're not a first timer, have you been here for the last five weeks? Have you watched from episodes one to five? Have you missed any? Are you gonna be playing catch up? Um, this week's probably gonna be the most, this week and next week is probably gonna be the most, I suppose, intense in terms of emotionally intense because 
there's a reason I haven't shared these things before. One, because I'm a firm believer in being intentional with what you share. You know, if you know me at all and have followed me for even a day or so, you'll know that I can't stand the filtered bullshit that's on the internet 99% of the time. I can't, I can't stand the, the shiny version, the filtered versions of people's lives that they portray. And I understand that some people feel like they can't share the negative sides because it might damage their credibility, make people think less of them. I, I understand those fears. I do. I get it. And thank you for all of you that are saying that you've been watching them all. That's, that's really encouraging. I understand why people don't share everything. But I honestly believe that it's quite damaging not to because of the people are watching you. If you know, I feel like I'm really honoured to have you guys learning and watching and tapping into me and my work for inspiration and guidance. And I'm doing you a massive injustice if I only share the highlights with you because when you go through shit and it feels intensely hard, you feel alone in that because you think you're the only one going through it. You think you've done something wrong. You think your journey's abnormal. You think you might not be able to come through it. You're not cut out for it. If I'm really honest with you when I share the things that haven't gone so well, you know you're not alone in those moments. And perhaps you can just look back on this and go, I remember Michelle said she went through this. And it'd just be that much easier because you're not alone and you're not going through it as an isolated case. And that's my hope. And that's why I'm sharing what I'm sharing over this week and next week because the hardest challenges I've had in business have been people challenges because I'm someone that really cares deeply about people. I'm pro you're probably the same. Um, I couldn't do what I do if I didn't. And when you care really deeply about people, you end up caring about their opinions of you as well. And their reactions to you and how they treat you matter. And whether it's on the internet or in real life, it cuts quite deep. So a lot of the things I'm going to be sharing with you over the next couple of weeks, the, the lowlights, <laughs> the, the things that happen that I really struggled intensely with, my toughest lessons, my hardest times, they're people problems. And this is why I've not shared them yet. One, because it wasn't the right time to, because I had to make sure I was being very intentional and the intention is to help. And I needed to make sure I was further enough, further enough through that struggle and I've fully learned the lessons from it in order to be able to help you with these stories. I think if sometimes if you share too soon, you're actually not sharing for the right reasons and you might not be giving the most you can from that situation. The other reason I haven't shared any of this up until this point is because I really battled with whether it was okay to, because it's not just about me, it's about other people. I would never mention names, I will never share with you who these people are in this story, in these stories. Um, I don't tell you any of this with the intention of rubbishing anybody else, putting anybody else down, putting myself up and above them, it's none of that. I'm not going to give opinions or on, on people's behaviour and... and I'm not holding on to any animosity, resentment, anger, hurt, any of those things towards any of the people that I'm about to share things with you about. So if you think, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, please don't ask me. If you think you know, don't, I won't answer you because it's not about that. This is about me sharing with you how it felt to be on the receiving end of people's not so nice sides sometimes. And how I dealt with that, because no doubt, if you are a woman in business, you are going to come up against some of this stuff. I wish I could say to you, you won't, and this is isolated, but I know it's not. And I hope you don't have to go through some of this stuff, but chances are good that you will. And that's why we're talking about it tonight. So we've got to the part of the story where living in Lanzarote, I've decided to go all in and build my first online course, which was demonstrating um, how I'd got really savvy with my money and how I'd managed to save the amount of money I'd saved. And I talked about all those figures last time. I'm not going to go into all that again. You know that you know the crack, you know where I was, what I was doing. 
And that first full year of setting up my first online course and group coaching program was the first year um, that we'd ever done anything like that before in terms of, um, you know, digital assets. And, and we, we reached a million in the first year. And you would think, wouldn't you? Well, God, you must have been just like celebrating and totally enjoy and like on cloud nine, nothing could have brought you down from that. That's probably what you're thinking. I would probably be thinking if I was watching someone tell me that story, I'd be thinking, it doesn't matter what happened to you at that point. Like you must have been like a pig in shit. <laughs> but, and some of that is true. I was, I am very grateful for that, that first year. And still to this day blown away by that because we we never really even though we set it as a goal and built the strategy and went after it we never really believed that we could do that so quickly if i'm honest so yes it was an amazing year it was a year of celebration i'm going to share with you more in the coming weeks about the strategy that we implemented to make that possible but it was also one of the toughest years i've ever had in business it was the year that i'd say emotionally i really bottomed out um and I seriously questioned for the first time ever whether I wanted to be in business, whether I wanted to deal with people anymore. Um, I felt really let down. I felt hurt. I felt bullied. I felt attacked. And these are words I don't use lightly because I, I'm not a victim at all by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not going to try and pretend I do have victim mentality. Anybody that knows me knows I do not. But this is how I felt. And here's why. So at this point, I was doing two things. I was still running my network marketing business and I was also now running a seven-figure coaching business. And in the process of building it in that first year, it honestly felt like things were falling apart, not falling together, not coming together. And there was a few things that made me feel like that. The first is that it wasn't very well received in the network marketing business that I was with by the leaders and my peers. It wasn't very well received that I was doing something else as well as network marketing. And this was a real shock to me because we were a group of entrepreneurs that had been building a business. And every entrepreneur knows that multiple income streams are smart and that it's not smart to have all your eggs in one basket. And I honestly didn't realize that I'd face any form of resistance or judgment for building another successful business outside of my network marketing business. But I did, and it came as a real shock because I had a, and it's a big lesson in not putting people on a pedestal. I had an idol and this was someone that I just really looked up to in the network marketing industry. She was a leader with a big business and a big income and a, a nice lifestyle and hugely inspiring woman to listen to when she spoke. And she tore me to shreds on a phone call. Out the blue one day, I just got called by, by this woman who never called me, by the way. Um, so it was very odd to get a, a phone call from her. Um, I wasn't someone in my network marketing business that was paraded around the stage a lot. So, you, you know, you have leaders that are paraded around the stage a lot and asked to speak and talk about how they've built their business to, to inspire everybody else and to teach everybody else in the company how to build theirs. Now, I wasn't someone that had a real presence in that way. I wasn't asked to talk much about what I was doing because I was building it online. And I was in a company where, although some people were using social media to build their business, it wasn't really the done thing in terms of the top level leadership were quite traditional in their approach. They were older, quite a bit older than me and different backgrounds. And they'd come from a mindset where you built businesses eyeball to eyeball, face to face through business cards and flyers and there's nothing wrong with that but it's dated and I knew it was dated and I'd already had a ton of experience in marketing in, in my businesses that I'd had previous to network marketing and 
as I mentioned to you in, in previous episodes, we'd been an early adopters of social media and we knew the power of it and there was no way I was not going to use it. But it was frowned upon a little bit. I was actually um, seen as a bit of a rebel for using social media to build your business, which sounds crazy now. So I wasn't invited to speak an awful lot about what I was doing, which is mental because, I mean, we were top recruiters in our business. We... Um, we had like, you know, months where we, we recruited a lot of people and we were number one for that. We, we held top positions for overall business in the whole of the UK. Like, and I'm not saying any of this to brag, but what I'm saying is it was very odd that we were never invited to talk to anybody on a large scale about how we were doing it. And it was because of that. It was because it was frowned upon to do anything different to what some of the old school leaders were teaching. And that was okay, because we just got on with it and we did our thing anyway. But we crossed a line now because we'd started doing something that was outside of network marketing. And because we use social media to market, it was quite obvious on social media that that's what we were doing. And I got a phone call from this, this woman who I'd put on a pedestal. I thought she was amazing. I'd always done that weird thing where you kind of look for the approval of somebody that you look up to and their, their, their opinion of you for some reason means more than other people's, you know, which is a big mistake. Never put people on a pedestal because judgment is judgment, whether you're judging down and looking at someone going, I would never do that, or whether you're judging up going, wow, they're amazing, I can never be like that. It's still judgment and it's not healthy. And it bit me in the ass big time because she rang and she just tore into me and said, I needed to stop what I was doing immediately. It was a distraction. It was distraction to the little people, the, the people that couldn't build businesses that I was building. And they were going to go off thinking they could do what I'd done and then they wouldn't be building the network marketing business and where would the company be if everyone was off doing that? And I was irresponsible as a leader and I would never be put on stage again. Like, it, it was pretty... And I'm, I'm smiling now at the, at, at the memory of it because of when you look back on something, you see it for what it is. But at the time, I was devastated. Absolutely devastated. I felt like that feeling when you've been called into the headmaster's office and really told off. And your mum's been called into school and you feel humiliated and you get that sinking feeling in your stomach. And I didn't know this at the time. This all unfolded after... But there was a few people in our company that had started to develop multiple income streams online with courses, programs, etc. Um, and there was one woman in particular who reached out to me and she'd been a leader in, in the business. Um, she was quite well known in, in network marketing and she reached out to say, oh, I noticed you're starting something else because obviously I'd started advertising my courses online and she said, um, me too, I'm doing something as well, I'm doing something different, it was slightly different to what I was offering. Um, but of course she was using online and, and social media to advertise it. And she reached out really like, um, I suppose like a peer, which when I look back now, probably was a bit odd because she'd never spoke to me the entire time we were in network marketing really or made any effort to get to know me um and she did say she was disappointed in me so that's exactly what she said um and suddenly this girl's reaching out in my inbox like wanting to form almost like an alliance and she was like oh I'm doing it too and they've been mean to me too and da 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 and I'll be honest I didn't really want to talk about it I'd, I've never been one for gossip or it just takes you out the game like it just but I could kind of tell this girl kind of like the gossip another lesson first instincts of people if someone comes at you in a way that doesn't feel right and you're a bit like mm, this feels like a bit a bit gossip here it feels a bit like a waste of my time it feels a bit low vibration I should have listened to that straight away I was too nice too polite this is and, and this has been a quite a fault actually a trend that you'll see over the next couple of weeks when you hear about my people problems that my boundaries haven't always been firm. They are much firmer now, but, but back then I just wanted to be nice and, and get on with people and help. And so I was just friendly back and sort of diffuse the conversation and tried to direct it somewhere more positive and ask more about what she was doing. And um, 
she was, I'm not going to say too much because I don't, if any of you know me and know her, I don't want to make it obvious who I'm talking about. It's not, not what I'm here to do. But she was offering a service that was complementary to the service that I was offering. So we had like the same ideal client, women in business, and I was offering business strategy uh, as a mentor. She was offering something complementary, but a different service. So I ended up having a few backwards and forwards conversations with this girl. She actually asked to jump on a call with me on Zoom and she was just kind of almost like insinuating she was interested in what I offered and wanted to know more about it. But it got, I started to get the impression that it was more about kind of finding out what I was up to than it was about forming a genuine connection or friendship, which kind of strengthened the whole, well, why have you not spoke to me in the last three or four years and suddenly you're all over me like a rash kind of feeling. But again, I just went with it um, and just thought, oh, you know, she seems nice. <laughs> um, and I invited her to collaborate with me. So basically, because she offered a service that complemented what I did, I advertised her within my client group as being someone that could be trusted to deliver this service, um, which meant that she was put in front of my network. It was very valuable and lucrative to her. Um, and she offered to give me an affiliate fee for anybody that went on to purchase her service. And I was really confident that it was a good service. So I was happy to do that. And I still think it was a good service, by the way, that that, that hasn't changed at all. But over the course of some weeks, she started to ask more questions about like, well, how we, like, it was quite, it was just, it was, a, it was, a, it was overstepping the mark in terms of boundaries. She wanted to know how my social media manager was working for me and what exactly she did and, and, and what tasks she did and how much do you pay her. And it was a lot of questions about the back end operational side of my business and how I'd created success. And I felt like it was a bit, rude to assume that it was okay to just pick my brain in that way and um I guess a bit presumptuous and I felt like I was already doing quite a bit for her in terms of helping her get her clients and sales and I I, I wasn't rude about it I never said I think you're overstepping the mark I probably should have um but I just kept politely putting it off um, and she ended up finding out I think I probably told her who my social media manager was she ended up booking a discovery call with my social media manager about her service so the discovery call was my social media manager in a discovery call with her with the intention of my social media manager buying something from her but what actually happened was she spent the entire hour asking about how she worked for me and what she did and if she'd work for her too and I thought, felt that was a bit underhand. Um, again, I didn't part company or cut ties. I just kind of went, oh God, that feels a bit icky. But anyway, I'm busy and I've got things to do and moved on. And then um, what I actually ended up happening was people started to reach out to me saying, has this girl got, I think this girl's got a real problem with you. And one woman in particular reached out and said, are you friends with... Let's call, the, let's call her Anna. Are you friends with Anna? And I was like, yeah, like I get on well with Anna. Right? She's, she, she, she collaborate, we collaborate together. I know her from network marketing, da da da. Um, she's in my program actually. She's the da 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 coach and she offers this service. And she was like, oh, I don't know how to say this to you, but I think I'd wanna know. She really is gunning for you. Like she's livid about what you're achieving. She's constantly talking about how many people are in um, are, are taking your services and how many people you co you've coached and how many people have bought your course and um, how much money you're earning and like she's she's livid like she'll ring me to to go what the fuck is she doing and how is she doing it and why is she keeping her cards so close to her chest and not sharing with me and I, I think you've got somebody like quite nasty in your circle there and I don't think their intentions are the best and I would want to know and and just in case you're doubting the legitimacy of this, here's some screenshots of the messages. And I was, I was absolutely gutted, gutted because you know, and you just feel like you've give, 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 and you know you've give too much, and you know that you've probably ignored some warning signs along the way about them perhaps not being the type of person that 
you would necessarily have in your circle if it wasn't in a business sense. Um, and then it got really vicious that she was contacting my clients and, and, and look, whether they contacted her, she contacted them, how they came to talk, I don't know. Let's face it, I put her in front of them, hadn't I? Because I'd positioned her as an expert in my client group. So I only had myself to blame for that, but she ended up forming this little group that was just like, oh, like vicious, absolutely vicious. And I didn't know this was unfolding. So in the midst of all of this, another friend, somebody who had been a really good friend of mine in network marketing had called me and had a go at me about, um, about what I was doing and causing distractions because people will wonder why you're not just a network marketer, are you not earning enough, are you not successful enough? It creates, you know, they were worried that as somebody that had done well in the network marketing industry, that was now doing something else, that other people in network marketing would go, oh, now she's doing that, that must be shit. I think we need to give people more credit than that was my was, was what I said. You know, I, I, I think that it's actually what we should be saying is you can do both really successfully. You can be an entrepreneur with multiple income streams like you haven't got to pigeonhole yourself into one thing. And although I fought my corner with it, I was starting to feel quite worn down and I was feeling worn down because I'd got friends, people who I thought were friends having a go. I'd got people who I really looked up to and idolized having a go. And then I'd got people that, um, I'd kind of let in on a professional level, clearly sticking the knife in my back. And, and in my mind, like to none of these people have I done anything to deliberately. And there were times, I won't lie guys, I was just sat crying to James going, what the fuck is wrong with people? Like retracing my steps going, right, what could I have done differently? And here's the mistake I made. In me thinking, what could I have done differently? What I was thinking was, but I was really nice to these people. And going back over all the things I'd done for people and all the things I hadn't done wrong. But that wasn't the lesson. It wasn't about I should have been nicer to people or I should have done more. It was I should have had firmer boundaries. I should have spotted the warning signs and said no to that. That was more the lesson. And I just, it took me a while to get there because I was thinking like, what did I, more like what did I do to deserve this rather than what could I have done to prevent it, if that makes sense. So this escalated a little bit and what happened was there was this like pool of people that I was actually meant to be coaching, they were in my programme, that suddenly just like overnight just kind of changed on me. It's a horrible feeling, like you, you probably will know what I mean if I say, you know, if you've ever been, ever been in friendship groups as, as, as girls at school or in, in another environment, maybe even in a work environment, because this is adults too, it's not just school playground tactics but you know when you just feel a shift like people aren't being right with you and they're like just not being very nice and like one word answering and just very cold and frosty and then you can see on social media that they're all interacting with this girl who I didn't know had a problem with me but seems to have become obsessed by my achievements and it's like this little click formed and I was the enemy to them and I just didn't know why. And I was saying to them, is everything okay? Have I, you know, have you done something? Do you want to talk to me? Is there something that like I could have done better for you? Is there, and it was horrible. I felt like I was losing my mind at points because I'm like, what? what is happening? And when I was confronting it, confronting the behavior with them and saying, is everything okay? They were going, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. What do you mean everything's fine? But then, being deliberately weird in their little clique and obviously frosty and would do something out of order like say something out of order and then I'd go back and say actually can we talk about this because that's not okay like there's clearly an issue here and then they'd backtrack and go no no no, there's no issue it's fine but then back in the little clique and like commenting on each other's posts and putting provocative um statuses up that I knew was about me and I was like what what have I done I'll give you an example I launched a campaign about consistent 100, 100k months because I was really, really proud of that achievement of really nailing the strategy so that 100k months were predictable and consistent and stable. Like To me, that was a next level of success, a new normal we'd never achieved before. And I created um, some copy around that 
talking about how 100k a month is around new normal. The next thing I know, another post, a post goes up in a group about, about that saying, don't trust people that talk about 100k months. They're not legit. And I was like, fuck, like what is happening? But then I confronted her about it. She's like, oh no, honey, it wasn't about you. And you're like, what's happening? So it felt like, it felt like everything was falling apart. It felt like I couldn't trust people. It felt really, really hard, really hard. The hardest thing I've ever had to go through because it all happened around the same time. But, but here's what I know. Here's what I know now with hindsight and growth and in going through those challenges and coming through the other side. And, and how you deal with it when people become bitter, jealous, change with you. When you experience someone telling you to not pursue your goals or whatever it might be. The first thing I know is that none of this was actually about me. None of it. It feels really personal at the time. But if somebody is going out of their way to put you down, whether it's to your face, behind your back, um, social media posts, whatever it might be about you, it's not about you. You've triggered something in them, but it's about them. And what that trigger is, is really none of your business. There were multiple people being triggered here for multiple reasons, but it all comes down to two things normally, and that's fear and ego. The fear that is triggered in someone when you shine your light and you achieve things and you talk about your vision and you go after the things that are important to you and you decide to be extraordinary and fuck mediocre, the fear that's triggered in other people is that they're inadequate now. They see your achievements as their failures sometimes. Fact. It happens. Does it mean that we should shrink our achievements? No. Did I feel like shrinking mine? A hundred percent. There were moments where I thought, oh my God, like before I post something or before I'd share something, I'd second guess it and think, oh, this is going to trigger them. This is going to... And I found myself changing the way I was operating because of it. It's normal. It's natural. I'm not saying... That, that you're not going to go through that because you probably will feel like that. You will probably feel attacked by it and hurt by it, but you must never pull back because you're not doing it for them. That's not the reason you started your business. And that's the conversation I had to have with myself. I didn't start my business to please them. I didn't start my business to accommodate these people. They're not the people that I want to make impact and change for. It's not why I'm here. It's not the mission. It's not the purpose. It's not relevant. It feels relevant because it feels so personal, but it's not relevant. And if I stop doing the things that are inspiring people, if I stop showing up and shining a light on the things I'm achieving and other people are achieving around me that I've helped through fear that I might offend the people that are just too bitter and I guess have a lack of self-awareness of themselves to understand what's going on. If I start accommodating for those people, then there's something wrong. I'm never gonna impact the people that matter. So you've gotta remember it's fear and ego. And when I say ego, I don't mean ego as in they've got a chip on their shoulder. I mean ego as in the human part of themselves. It's not their soul talking. They're not the best version of themselves. I had to dig really deep and see them as souls that were struggling in this human experience, that were experiencing fears and desperately scared of not being enough and looking at me and feeling inadequate in some way for whatever reason they, they were being triggered even the people in network marketing that i'd looked up to suddenly i saw them as human as they are and as frightened as they are that i'm going to cause a distraction that's going to affect their business and it's scarcity at its best. We have to recognise it in ourselves because it's so destructive. But we have to recognise it in other people as well. If we're not thinking abundantly and we're not certain of our own abundance and that we're taken care of and that we just need to focus on our own, our own shit and our own strategy and confidently go in the direction of our goals, if we're not in that place and we're in scarcity and we're in that mentality of, oh God, it might not work out, there's not enough to go around, then we do start feeling threatened by other people and what they're doing. But it's scarcity. 
I was able to recognise it where they weren't able to recognise it. And I'm sure these people have grown now. We're going back a couple of years. So, you know, it's not to say they're still the same. And I'd like to think they've learned a lot as much as I have from from these, these situations and, and challenges that we face together. I believe we come into each other's lives as planned, on time, written into our contract. When we incarnated into this world, we decided I'm gonna meet you at this point and I'm gonna teach you that lesson. I believe that as woo-woo as it sounds. So if you believe that too, you can't start getting mad at people when they show up and share their worst sides with you for the benefit of you learning. Because what I realize is they're in pain too. I'm in pain on the receiving end of your shit, but it sucks to be in your head. It sucks to be you right now, lashing out at me the way you are, acting the way you are. That's a reflection of how you're feeling inside and you must be in so much pain, so much pain right now because that projection is a reflection of how you're feeling inside and that sucks, like it really sucks. I would rather be me than you right now. And if I see that, that pain in someone, because the people that are the hardest to love are the people that genuinely need it the most, fact. And oh my fucking God, did these people make it hard for me to love them. But I found a place in myself that I could. And for me, that place was going, we're souls having a human experience. We're here to teach each other something. What do I need to learn to be better so I can grow through this situation? And I needed to learn fucking boundaries. I needed to learn to listen to my intuition. If something felt off, it, it probably is. If I don't like the way someone's acting, if they're moving mad around me, then I probably need to wide, wide birth them. And it taught me to say no if something didn't feel good and that actually this is the line and once you cross it, you know, we're done. And that's whether you are a friend, a peer, someone that's forced yourself into my life, a client, it doesn't matter. The boundaries are the boundaries, the line's the line and it's not okay to cross it. And, and I had to learn that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have learned it if I hadn't gone through this stuff. So I'm so, so grateful for these people. This isn't me showing up to rubbish them at all. It's me showing up to say, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this experience. And I hope you find it in yourself to thank the people that are making it hard for you now, if you're going through something similar or something completely unrelated, but that is a people problem. Find it in your heart to thank them. Find it in your heart to show enormous amounts of love and gratitude. You won't be able to do it straight away. I couldn't do it straight away. Fuck me, I meditated hard with some of these people to release them with love because I wanted to release them with love and a slap in the face at points. That's the truth. We're human. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit and pretend that I just sat in meditation and said um a few times and suddenly I could love them and everything dissolved. It didn't happen like that. There were points where I wanted to fucking brain someone. And... That's okay too, because we are human and we're here to have a human experience. You gotta remember that things have to fall away sometimes to make room for things that are so much better. A lot of these people and situations, I had to be freed of them in order for me to create room energetically and structurally in my life and business for better. Because if you're all clogged up with friendships that don't fit anymore and you're working with clients that aren't your sole clients, you're clogged up with stuff that isn't allowing you to make room for the perfect fit. And it wasn't until all of these things started to fall away that all the better things started to show up. And I could see that as long as I'd been holding on to these things that didn't fit anymore... And that included network marketing for me. It's not because it's a bad industry. It's not because it's not great. It is. It's just that I needed to let go of it. I was holding on to it, trying to make it fit because I'd said to myself, I'll always be in network marketing. I love it. But you should never say never. And the reality is, there's no shame in quitting something that you've outgrown. But it had been drummed into me in that business, in that industry, you never quit, you never quit. If you quit, you fail. The only way to fail is to quit. And I was like, I can't quit this. I can never quit this, even if it feels wrong. And all, they're all, all these people in there are making me feel miserable and attacking me from all directions. I can't quit, I can't quit. Of course you can. Of course you can. You can quit. You can quit at any point that you decide that you've had enough and you're moving on to something better. You don't quit to go backwards. You don't quit because it's too hard. Never fucking quit because something's too hard because nothing is too hard for you. And this wasn't me walking away because I can't take it anymore. It was me freeing myself of something that was weighing me down with obligation of staying. 
And that doesn't serve anybody, whether it's friends, other relationships, businesses that you just can't walk away from because you're like, I can't quit because I'm not done yet. God's sake, just let it go if it's no longer a fit and you want to free yourself up to move on to something better. And that's exactly what happened. And don't forget that you can't connect the dots forward. Hindsight is wonderful. <laughs> it's so valuable, but you have to get through it to have the benefit of it. You can't look forward and go, oh, I can see why this is happening. I can see that because that happens, that will happen and that will happen and then that will happen and it'll all be glorious because it doesn't work like that. You've got to step into the fire and when you're in it and your feet fucking burning, you've got to run through it. What's the saying? If you're going through hell, keep going. You've got to keep going. Don't start unraveling and pulling back and going, oh shit. I've got to change myself to hold on to that friend or that situation or that person or change their opinion of me. And I've got to fit their mold of how they think I should be so they'll like me more. No, we've got to go, move out the way. I'm going through the fire and clearly you're not coming with me and that's okay because there's something better on the other end. And know that when you get there, you'll look back and go, oh, I see, I see why that had to happen. I see now that, because if this hadn't have happened, honestly, I wouldn't be where I am now. I just wouldn't be. There's no way because there's so many things that happened after that that were a direct result of that one, one thing or these collection of people that really challenged me. Doesn't end there. So when I was through this, then came my next big challenge. And this was, and this is a question I get asked a lot. It's a question that I was asked in um, a group call in WAM today. We were on a mentorship call and, and a, a girl asked this. She's just, she's amazing. She literally, when I met her six months ago, didn't have a business, didn't really have a, a, an idea what she was gonna do. She had a few ideas that she'd played with, but nothing concrete and full of doubt. Like, oh my God, can I do it? Like. We're six months in and now she's launched a really successful coaching program, a group program, which, you know, you've got to go through a stage really of like getting some experience one-to-one -one or, and then leverage into, bam, like she's there in six months and she's running this successful group. She's just finished her first round of a six-week course with a group of women. And, and the question she asked me was, how do you deal with client problems? Like, what's the hardest thing you've ever been through when it's come to client issues and how have you dealt with them? Because if we're really honest, isn't that one of our biggest fears when we start out? Is that we'll have client problems that are too big for us? Like, what about if someone doesn't pay? What about if someone fucking hates you in your work? What about if you have a nightmare client that you wish you'd never have signed up and never took the, the money from because you're like, oh God, I don't want to work with you. What if, you know, you have all these things, right? What if this, what if I can't help someone? What if, what if, what if nine times out of 10 our fears are that we're gonna make a mistake or we're gonna make ourselves look a dick. They're the things we're, we're normally scared of. And when you're somebody that's working with people and exchanging a service or a course or something, that's yours, that you've put your heart and soul into. There's always that fear of, what if there's a problem with people that buy it? What if they, you know, all that? Who can relate? Who on the call can relate? Who's had those fears? Who still has those fears? Because this is what we're gonna be talking about next week. The mistakes I made, the client mistakes that I made and how I came through them. There's some shockers that I'm gonna share with you next week. And I'm not going to sugarcoat any of it. Like, if it makes you think any less of me because I made these mistakes, so be it. Because I'm doing it in the hope that those of you that have made them go, oh, fuck it, it's okay. It's all right, because she made them as well, and she's all right. She's still done okay. Or I'm scared that I was going to make that mistake. But actually, she did. She's done them all. <laughs> and she's still done all right. You know, I can, if, if you go away from the session next week going, I can make loads of mistakes and still be a millionaire, then I've done a good job. Because that's what I want you to know from next week is that you can fuck up a million times and still make a million pounds. Because it's not about the mistakes that you made, it's about what you do with them. It's about how you learn and grow from them and it's, they're the reason that you're different next time. It's easy when it's easy. And we're not learning anything when it's easy. It's when we really fuck up that it's hard. And I'm gonna tell you about those fuck ups. I'm also going to tell you about how people fucked up with the way they treated me too um, and what the consequences were 
for both of us in that. Um, so that's next week. So I did say, didn't I, these next couple of weeks are going to be quite like hard hitting in terms of people problems. But I really, do you know what? I think we should talk about this more, but I think people get scared because they get scared like I did of offending people or people watching it and thinking, oh my God, she's talking about me. That might happen. I'm, I'm fully aware that if this, especially one of these girls, if she was obsessed enough to be like, how the fucking hell is she doing this? She might still be watching. And I'm a bit scared of her still, to be honest. Because <laughs> I just think you've got to be a special kind of person to be so obsessed. I am telling you all this and running the risk of that happening and starting a bloody fire again with it all. But the thing is, I think this is why people don't share. They're worried about what people will say, the consequences of it. They're worried about their reputation. Because like, you know, I'm sharing with you client problems next week. And I think coaches won't share that with you because they're like, oh no, I don't want to talk about my client problems. I only want to talk about the success that my clients have had. I don't want to talk about the problems because it might put people off. Oh, I'm sorry, but if you've worked with enough people and you want to you want to say publicly that you are a professional at what you do, that means you must have worked with a shit ton of people. And if you're going to tell me it was all perfect and you haven't had one problem in that shit ton of people, I'm going to question that. Because I've been to Disney and I think Disney's amazing. I think it's the happiest place on earth. I think they've got their customer service locked down. There's Disney University for customer service. People role model themselves on the service that their customers get, but there's still a whole department dedicated to people that it's still not good enough for, the complaints department. So if you ain't had some people problems yet, you ain't worked with enough people yet. So. When you do have some people problems, you can remember some of the things that I'm going to share with you next week. But who else thinks, be honest, who else thinks that people, more people should be sharing this stuff? Because I don't know about you, but when I was, honestly, when I was going through some of these problems, I couldn't find the solution anywhere. Yes, I could go to my coaches who I paid one-to-one -one time with. I couldn't go and tap into free trainings and look at people's content out there. These like gurus that were advertising themselves as the go-to people that you could never fucking get to and ask a question. All they were talking about was all the success they were having and all their clients were having and all the rosy side. No one was talking about the shit I was dealing with at that time and I was just thinking I was broken. And it wasn't until I got around some like high-level masterminds where they're all going, oh yeah, that happened to me, oh, it's quite normal. And I was like, well, fuck it. If it's normal, why aren't we talking about it? Why are we only talking about the stuff that we want to share, that's comfortable to share? That's not authentic. So here goes, next week, I'll see you there.